John Boy. John. Lessons from the screen, what we mean is we go through Different documentaries to tell you what they gon' do Give you our lessons, give them our blessings If they trash, we tell you, there is no second guessing Knowledge is power, but time is precious And we're here to keep you from them lessons So sit back as we groove, giving you the review So you only spend time on the docs that you need to Welcome to Lessons from the Screen, the show where we give you a review of whether or not any particular information that you can get through any particular screen of any kind is worth your time. We waste our time, our energy, and our brain power so that you don't have to. Lessons from the screen is sponsored by Pax Inc., a black activist advocacy and think tank with the purpose of increasing the quality of life for black people in America through education and a culture shift. You can check them out at www.pactsinc.org. That's paxinc.org. Go to the website, leave a review. Leave some money donations. Leave your services. Volunteer. Leave word on the street. Talk about it. Whatever you want to leave, leave it. And they can definitely use it to make things better. This week is Trending Tuesday again. I know we didn't have one last time because issues and whatnot. But this week we're going to have one. And this week on Trending Tuesday, we will, like we did the last time we did it, take a look at the top trending topics according to Google searches. And if we see an additional listing that we think is interesting, we'll cover that as well. Today being the 17th of July, we'll be going over the top 10 and giving you some insights as to what we think about the topics and whether or not we think they're worth your time and your energy based on the potential impact that they could have on your life and, of course, our own bias and interest in this episode of lessons from the screen you are going to get this week's edition of trending tuesday it's time for trending tuesday trending trending tuesday number at number 10 on Trending Tuesday, we have Jeff Bezos. Now, Jeff Bezos, you might know him not only as the arch enemy of Donald Trump, but he is also the, the owner of Amazon, the owner of the Washington Post, and the owner of a space company that launches rockets in outer space. So Jeff Bezos, on Monday, yesterday, his wealth crossed over the 150 billion dollar mark that's right this man has a net worth of 150 billion dollars and making him the richest person in modern history and by modern history that just means since 1982 when forbes started tracking the richest people so he's basically the richest person that forbes has ever tracked bill gates came close in the 90s his uh wealth in the 90s during the dot-com era was at 100 billion which is about 140 145 billion now if you add in inflation so jeff bezos beat him out now jeff bezos beat him out or jeff bezos achieved this level of wealth with the market surge that amazon had jeff bezos is the owner of amazon and the majority shareholder he owes owns 16 percent of the company whose stocks are trading at over $1,000 a share. But they experienced a boom coming into Amazon Prime Day. Now, Amazon Prime Day is basically Amazon's attempt to supplant uh, the, the, the Black Friday sales that we see happening all over the country during the Black Friday weekend, as well as the Cyber Monday follow-up. So Amazon created its own holiday following the 20th anniversary back in 2015, I believe it was, they created their own holiday, their own corporate holiday, and they introduced the Amazon Prime Day as a way to celebrate themselves. So here we see, here we see with the surge that they're experiencing on their company's website in terms of, of anticipated surges, shall we say, on their company's website in terms of this Amazon Prime Day and the deals that are going to be offered the stock prices for Amazon shot up and Jeff Bezos' wealth shot up with it. So with that being said, and I will say this about Amazon Prime Day, 
the servers, Amazon servers, and you know Amazon gets a lot of traffic on a daily basis. Their servers crashed yesterday. Not even the day of. They crashed the day before the Amazon Prime sale. Now, this again, this sale is extreme savings and sales for only for Amazon Prime members. So it becomes an extremely important marketing tool as well for getting people to join Amazon Prime, of which they, they just up the price of Amazon Prime for $100 a year to $120 a year. But anyways, so Jeff Bezos and Amazon have been tracking very well in the searches ever since that news came out about how wealthy he was. Jeff Bezos is not known for being philanthropic although of late he has promised that he's going to open his purse strings up a lot more number nine at number nine we have Le'Veon bell the running back for the pittsburgh steelers now he failed to reach a contract extension with the pittsburgh steelers and he is one of the one of the best running backs in the league so this is significant for sports fans out there. And we have our own sports show, the, the Fix Sports Podcast with Joseph Ward. And I'm sure he's going to talk about this because this does impact the Pittsburgh Steelers organization. It definitely changes the potential landscape of the NFL because Le'Veon Bell is a running back that is still that good. So we're going to lead that to Joseph Ward. And I hope that he doesn't leave me hanging like he did last time we did a Trending Tuesday with the World Cup. Number eight. At number eight, we have ninjas. That's right. Real life ninjas. People are searching ninjas. And the reason they're searching ninjas is because according to an NPR show, Planet Money, there is a shortage of ninjas in Japan. Now, let me let me lay this out for you because I know that sounds weird, right? It sounds weird to me even saying it. Like there's a shortage of ninja. Why are people searching for ninjas? Why is this an issue? Well, apparently, the city of Iga, Iga, Iga. I'm sure there are a bunch of ways to say it, and only one of them is the right way. And I did not do the necessary research to figure out what the right way to say it is. But not boring all of that. The birthplace of the ninja apparently has a festival that it does every single year called the Ninja Festival. And it can't find enough martial artists to perform for tourists during the festival. Now, professional ninjas in this city can make up to $85,000 per year. But even with the salary being that high, it's not enough to attract people to the city to endure the intensive, rigorous training of becoming a ninja to perform for the festival. Japan has is going through a period of low unemployment right now. And so all of the, the, the specialty towns, the, the little towns that provide a specialty service that could usually attract desperate people by way of high wages are having trouble doing so. And this city is one of those towns. And as such, Japan is running out of ninjas the city is doesn't have enough ninjas to perform its festival, so the city is dying. NPR reported on it, and people started Googling ninjas. Good stuff. Number, number seven. Seven, seven, seven. At number seven, we have John Schnatter. Now, John Schnatter is the founder of Papa John's, and I'm sure we're all aware at this point that uh, last week, it came out that he had used the N-word, he said nigga, in a training session. And I believe the training was actually on uh, PR issues and, and, and the way to handle such things. So he said nigga during the call, during the uh, training, it was a conference call training, and that got out. So... Everything had got quiet, you know, he got his name removed from his buildings and campuses kicked him out. People gave him his money back. Some people did. Other people kept his money. They just took his name off their building, so on and so forth. Uh, but he hasn't stopped talking. So he came out recently over this past week 
end and basically said that the PR agency that conducted the training demanded six million dollars from the company in exchange for silence about what happened in the media training session during which he said nigga he refused to give them the six million dollars and he believes they released the tape in order to kind of punish him for it so he's been saying that as well as saying other things saying that people are just overreacting people are upset things of that nature but it, it caused his name to be brought back up into the light of what was going on and so people are google searching it because he won't be quiet the company has released a statement saying that are asking him to stop speaking on behalf of the company and uh it seems that he is not really caring too much about what the company says there have been some reports that he's even saying that his decision to step down as ceo and board chair was a mistake but he still owns 33 percent of the company he's still a majority shareholder even though he doesn't have any direct or operational power any longer he still is the majority shareholder still has uh ownership in the com company but that's why he's there and this is an interesting story to look at it's been an interesting story to follow for various reasons for me i love watching fake outrage and it doesn't get any more faker than when a white person says nigga and everybody pretends like they care but it's still an interesting story to watch number, number six, six. At number six, we got Manny Machado. Now, Manny is a baseball player. He's a shortstop. And apparently, he's a pretty popular and successful one because trade rumors have got him in the top 10 of Google search trends. And that's basically all there is to this story. The Baltimore Orioles are looking to trade shortstop Manny Machado to the Los Angeles Dodgers on Wednesday. That would be tomorrow. So obviously the source comes from comes from a position of uh anonymity 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 I can't say that word anyways they're saying it cuz they don't, they they're saying it from a position of not wanting people to know who said it because it hasn't been finalized but that's what's going on with that I'm sure if it's that big a deal just like with Le'Veon Bell You'll hear about more details about it from the fix. Number, number five. Now, for those of you who are big into the fashion world, I'm sure you already know about this, but Annabelle Nielsen, Nielsen, a former model, children's author, reality television personality, and friend and confidant to cult fashion stars like Alexander McQueen and Kate Moss, died on thursday uh that was last thursday obviously not this thursday because this thursday hasn't happened yet so if she died on this thursday then she wouldn't she would still be alive anyways she died thursday at 49 years old so the police said they have been called to her multi-million dollar home in the chelsea neighborhood of london where a body was found they have not confirmed the cause of death but said that it was not being treated as suspicious so obviously somebody with with ties like that especially in the fashion world anytime you have a death like that like we saw last time there was a trending tuesday we had a death of a fashion icon and it was it was talked about so this case falls in that same scenario she's born in 1969 to a wealthy british aristocratic family she was dyslexic severely dyslexic and left school at 16 after being badly bullied and she went on to overcome her adversities and this that and the third and you know became a successful person so she's dead if you're in the fashion I hope you can manage. If you're not in the fashion, we should all still feel something about a loss of life. Number, number four. 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 Now, number four, we have Maria Butina. Now, 
there's been a lot of talk about what Trump did in Russia standing next to President Putin. And there's been a lot of talk about the ongoing investigation, the witch hunt, as he and the Republicans have been calling it. And the interesting thing about a witch hunt is that it's not actually a bad thing if you're finding witches. And they found a lot of witches, actually. Uh, so Maria Butina happens to be the latest batch of bitch, witches, I'm sorry, witches that have been found uh, with the investigation. She has been indicted on criminal charges and she has been charged with interfering with U.S. affairs. Now, Maria Butina came to the United States on August 2016 under a student f1 student visa i'm sorry so that basically her purposes were to attend a university full-time in the district of columbia but in fact she was here according to the fbi as an agent on behalf of the russian federation and while here in the states she did her best to facilitate meetings between top republican officials and politicians top conservatives and russian officials russian russian politicians and russian powerful members of the russian state so to that effect she also there have been questions about her involvement with the nra and the russians using the nra to funnel money from russia into the trump campaign and so this this whole thing really begins to be fleshed out and look very interesting with this recent batch of indictments uh Mueller indicted 12 Russian officers, military officers, in the charge of meddling with U.S. affairs. Now, what's interesting about this particular case is, it's not that Butina did anything wrong, per se. It's simply that she didn't register as an agent of a foreign government. So if she had registered as a foreign operative, she could have still been doing everything that she was doing. But because she didn't register as a foreign operative, everything that she was doing is illegal. So, and there's a lot going on with that. Definitely understand why this is trending. I definitely understand why it's at number four with several articles being published and well over 100,000 searches so far. And I expect that number to climb. I expect this to go higher. I expect it to. That means that it probably won't. But it's an interesting story. Number three. Now, at number three, we have something that black folks should definitely pay attention to. Val Sartin. I think I'm saying that right. I hope I'm saying that right. Anyways, Val Sartin is a heart drug that is linked to blood pressure and other things like that. Now, apparently this medication may contain an impurity linked to cancer and it has it has contained probably this impurity since 2012 european regulators said this on tuesday and last week the food and drug administration issued a recall of several medications that contain the active ingredient valsartan so and again, it's used to treat high blood pressure and heart failure. So again, this is something that is huge. And they have launched an investigation to figure out the scope of the potential contamination. But as always, they say that it's still too early to provide information on the long-term risk. So the, the contamination is something that they're calling NDMA and like I said, it's a potentially cancer-causing thing. It has been known to cause liver damage in animals and people. And considering the rate of blood pressure issues and, and cardiovascular issues we have in our community, something like this is something that we should definitely take seriously, especially if you know our medication is, is, is treating our blood pressure but potentially giving us cancer. So that's definitely one you're going to be aware of. I'm happy to see that it's as high as it is. Um, I'm, a matter of fact, I'm going to do a quick update right now to see if it's still number three. And no, it's not. 
it's already dropped down to number five. So that is sad and troubling and disturbing. But now you know. Number two. So at number two, we got Netflix. Now, Netflix is being searched because they took a hit in the stock market. Their stocks took a tumble. And their stocks took a tumble because they posted mediocre earnings for the quarter and they missed their subscriber target by a million customers. So it took a hit. It, is, it has to be said, though, that they still have 130 million people around the world tuning in. They still have a gigantic lead. They still have a gigantic market share over the rest of the streaming industries. Um, Hulu has just passed 20 million subscribers in May. So Netflix is still by far and away the champion, but they definitely took a hit. They posted mediocre earnings. They posted, uh, they didn't hit their subscriber targets. It, oh, yeah, type of showing for Netflix for the quarter. And the stock took a dip 5% on Tuesday. And its initial dip was 13% on Monday. So not a whole lot to say there. If you're into money and all of that, you already know about this. If you're not into money and all of that, then I would advise you not to try to pick out individual stocks anyways but that's where we are with netflix number, number one. One. one and that number one interestingly enough the 2018 home run derby and it's not so much that there was a home run derby as it seems to be the fact that people think that the winner of the home run derby cheated to win it. And so as with most things out there, there is a vast conspiracy about why the improbable has occurred. And it was improbable for him to win. He had a furious surge, 18 home runs. To, to, to win the championship or to win the home run derby. And people are like, come on, this isn't real. So if you go to Twitter, you'll find all these people typing out their, their explanations for how it didn't happen, how it wasn't, how they cheated, how the rules weren't enforced, how it was really a television scam, how there wasn't really a home run derby at all. And, all, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. But... Bryce Harper won the home run derby. And with that, I'm pretty sure, again, it's a sports topic. Joseph Ward is probably going to get into it on the fix, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. But that was your number one subject, number one search term. Uh, and as of right now, I just refreshed because I refreshed earlier to see about the uh, Val Sarden. It is still number one as of this moment with over one million searches and a uh, poo-poo load of articles written about it. So there you have it, folks. That's our top 10 at 10 on Trending Tuesday. It's time for Trending Tuesday. Trending, Trending, Trending Tuesday. Trending Tuesday. Now, that was the show, but there is always the option of a plus one. And this week, I wanted to highlight the Rugrats. Now, for those of us that grew up in the 80s and 90s, we are very familiar with the Rugrats. We love the Rugrats. We watched the Rugrats growing up. We hated Rugrats in real life, but we loved them on the TV show. Nickelodeon has announced that the Rugrats are coming back to TV and movie theaters. So you're going to see Tommy. You're going to see Chucky. You're going to see Angela. You're going to see all of the Rugrats back in action nickelodeon says they're going to do it i believe them uh the rugrats is going to return to the network with 26 episodes the creators of the series are going to return as executive producer and the are as executive producers and additional news 
is expected to come out in the coming months about the airtime and the casting and everything like that. So we don't know if the original voice actors will will reprise their roles. We don't know the live action movie. Um, we don't know what's going to happen with that. We do know that it's slated to hit theaters in 2020, computer generated characters. Um, so, you know, it's, it's going to be an animated film. They had an animated film of the Rugrats actually it came out in like the late 90s, 98, 99, something like that. But that's what's going on. I was real, you know, kind of excited to see that because cartoons nowadays just suck. They just, they're just awful. And maybe that's the old man in me. I don't know. But they're just not good. So it's always good when you hear about a good cartoon from the past making a resurgence, making reemerging, and coming back to delight the people that were children when it first came out. So that's the Rugrats. And that is the show. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Lessons from the Screen Trending Tuesdays. And we will see you in two days on Thursday for a regularly scheduled program. Lessons from the screen, what we mean is we go through Different documentaries to tell you what they gon' do Give you our lessons, give them our blessings If they trash, we tell you, there is no second guessing Knowledge is power, but time is precious And we're here to keep you from them lessons So sit back as we grew, giving you the review So you only spend time on the docs that you need to Once again, I want to thank you for tuning in to Lessons from the Screen Lessons from the Screen is brought to you by Paxing. Through the Freedom Train Network, you can find us on www.freedomtrainradio.com or on iTunes, Google Play Music, or Stitcher. Be sure to head to one of those places and leave us a review, and then be sure to head back to the website to let us know what you think about the show and communicate with us. Also, be sure to head to www.packsync.org and show some love and support for our sponsors. PackSync is doing big things in the community and trying to do more, always trying to do more. So be sure to head to the website. That's www.pactsinc.org. Donate, volunteer, become a member, talk about it, whatever. They can use your support. And once again, they are doing great things in the community. And as always, Lessons from the Screen has a frame of reference and perspective that is aligned with that of the black community. The things that we look at whether it be on the Trending Tuesday or the regular Lessons from the Screen show, will always be looked at from the black perspective. So keep that in mind because we need more minds shaped into that perspective and trying to do things that we need done for ourselves. So with that in mind, again, thank you guys for listening in. Remember to tune in to the Freedom Train Radio. We have the app that's available that you can get from the website. It's in the Google Play Store. Sorry, it's not available on iTunes yet. We have the live internet radio, and we have more shows coming up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and I will see you guys on Thursday for the next episode of Lessons from the Screen. <laughs>